Three days before New Year's Eve in 2021, I was tested for COVID and told that I must quarantine until the test results come back. It was just my luck that the test results wouldn't be ready until next year. I called my girlfriend of two years and broke the news. I wouldn't be able to party with her or socialize with anyone until next year. She was with me the day before I got tested, but she didn't offer to visit or stay with me. Although I was bummed, I was being quarantined, so I chose not to be offended. I texted her on the day before New Year's Eve, and she only replied four times in the entire day. Her responses were short and cold. I couldn't believe she didn't have time to video call me at all. On the day before New Year's Eve, she didn't respond to me at all. At this point, I was really disappointed and pretty much assumed we were done. Why else would she ignore me? I would never do this to her, especially if she was sick and alone over New Year's. On New Year's Eve, she texted me once to ask how I was doing. After I replied, I didn't hear anything. Midnight arrived, and I banged pots and pans out my bedroom window while I waited for her to message or call me. She never did. Around 1 a.m., I started calling her over and over again. Her phone would just ring. Finally, someone answered. It was a man's voice. He told me to stop calling her because she was asleep in his bed. I told him I was her boyfriend of two years, and he couldn't be serious. He said he was dead serious. She was staying at his house and sleeping with him for the past three days. He said she told him she had been single for months now, and my phone number was programmed as lame ex-boyfriend. I was in disbelief. I demanded to talk to her, but he hung up on me. I was distraught. In the morning, she texted me to say, Happy New Year. I love you. And I responded with, That means nothing if you say it from another man's bed. She called me immediately and started trying to figure out what I knew. As soon as I told her I spoke with him on the phone, she confessed everything. She met him on Tinder a couple of weeks ago and decided to meet up with him three days before New Year's Eve. She stayed at his house from then until this point. Even though it wasn't much of a surprise, I dumped her. She was understanding and calm, but it was just the start of her bad karma. The man she was sleeping with kicked her out on January 4th because his wife and kids were coming back. She went back to her parents' house, but that was where she normally lived anyway. It was at this time that she really started to feel regret for what she did. She threw away our relationship so easily, but now she was alone. She started calling me every day, but I wouldn't always answer. She basically kept saying how sorry she was and that she was stupid for seeking another man. I agreed with all of her self-criticism without offering any support or willingness to meet in person again. She gave up calling me for a little while, so it was odd when she called me about two weeks later. She was sobbing when she told me she was pregnant. I told her if she was going to keep the baby, she'd have to get a DNA test to prove it was mine. She cried harder, explaining she didn't want to keep the baby, but she didn't have the money or anyone to help her pay for an abortion. She couldn't tell her parents because they wouldn't want her to have an abortion. I told her that sucked and hung up. I didn't know at the time, but she asked one relative at a time to help her get an abortion. How embarrassing. She was met with denial after denial until someone finally told her parents what was going on. They told her she could choose between being pregnant and homeless or being pregnant and living with them. She chose to stay with them. I called her parents to find out all this and asked them to have the baby's DNA tested so I would know if I was the father. It didn't take long to find out I wasn't. If my ex wasn't ashamed before this, she certainly was now. Her parents grilled her until she finally told them who she thought the father was. Sad thing was that she couldn't even be sure. Her parents took her phone and called his number. His wife answered. I don't know for sure what happened next but I heard that she filed for divorce and custody of their kids. Another family broken apart due to infidelity, selfishness, and inconsideration. The man was willing to do a DNA test to find out if he was the father, but after it was concluded that he was, he refused to be involved with the child at all. I think he was so willing to prove he wasn't the father that he didn't give any consideration to what he would do if he was. My ex tried to get child support from him, but he fled the country. He wasn't taking any chances, so my ex was left alone to raise a child at the young age of 22. Her parents offer her a free babysitting service, but only when she goes to work at her crappy job. 
They call every single time to make sure she's there since she destroyed all trust they had in her. Needless to say, my ex learned that cheating is never a good idea. It brings many unintended consequences, embarrassment, and shame. I learned how important it is to take your time while dating someone. Just because you've been with them for one or two years doesn't mean you know them as well as they want you to believe. I'm starting this new year as a bachelor, swimming in positive vibes. Wow, OP. I am so sorry you had to go through this over New Year's. People often use this time to reflect on their past and contemplate their future, which must have made it all the more painful for you. I believe you did the right thing by noticing the odd behavior and quickly realizing the relationship was probably coming to an end. Karma took care of the rest for you. Many times, it's much better to let go of a cheating partner than to hold on to them and attempt to regain trust. People who do things without thought for others will often find themselves getting into trouble. Stay clear of that and focus on yourself. When someone pops into your life, take your time getting to know them and follow your gut if something feels off. A healthy relationship would have constant communication and listening. Thank you for sharing your story. I wish you all the best. Now for today's second story. So here comes a bit of a rant, but I have to get it off my chest. My wife, 30 female, and I, 33 male, have been together for eight years, married five, and D-Day was two weeks ago. A little background to make some things a little clearer later on. We were both really into the punk music scene, and that's how we met and how we spent a lot of our time. As time went on, I lost interest in and grew out of going to concerts and shows, but my wife still enjoys going. So two weeks ago, there was a concert she wanted to go to, as usual, passed, but she went with some friends of ours, and like always, I told her to have a good time. Later in the night, I get a Snapchat from one of the friends at the concert. It's of the other friend at the bar acting strange. I'm a little confused why they sent it to me, but then the camera pans and zooms to my wife talking to a guy, and it looks like they are really enjoying each other's company. Nothing physical, just really close talking, but very flirtatious looking. I tried texting them asking what's going on, but I don't get an answer from them. I start texting my wife, but also, no answer. I honestly trusted my wife, and even though the text over the video was troubling, I reassure myself, everything is okay, and try to get some sleep. But it's not okay, I can barely sleep, and if I do happen to doze off, I wake up with a tight gut, checking my phone for messages, but there's nothing. I hear the door open around 4 a.m. along with soft sobbing. I'm in bed at this moment, and my heart is pounding. She comes into the bedroom, sits by my side, unkind of pretending to be asleep, and shakes me saying we need to talk. She tells me she slept with someone else that night. My whole world literally shattered in the time it took to say that sentence. My blood felt on fire like I was getting needle pin pricks all over my body. I'm just sitting there in this pain. She reached for my hand, and I pulled away. She is crying and says she's sorry, regrets it, is remorseful, and all that. Deep down, I wanted her to visually see how hurt I am, so I asked for details. She tells me they met at the show, talked, and hit it off. She said she lost herself and it felt like her first date all over again. I asked about what our friends did, and she tells me they tried to pull her away, but she lied to them and said he was an old friend and they were catching up. She left the concert with him and went to his place to have sex. After having sex, she says she fell asleep for a bit and then woke up feeling, what have I just done? She's crying and tells him she has to go, and says she cried the entire cab ride back. I start with the how could you and why. Her only explanation was she got those first date feelings again, and he reminded her of me when we first met. We had a wonderful marriage. Lots of affection, communication, love, and understanding. She had no issues with the marriage. This was all one dot big dot mistake. I know she regrets it, I know how remorseful she is, and that is what hurts the most. I could understand if I was slipping as a husband or if she was unhappy, but everything was fine. She's been very honest with everything, and in the past two weeks has taken a lot of heat from friends and family. Every day I can see it on her face how much she wishes she could change the things she did and how much she wants to reconcile. Yesterday when I woke up, I lay in bed and I was feeling good must have had a good dream or something. And I thought of all the good we had and how I shouldn't let this ruin our 
and what we both thought was a great marriage. I was actually kind of smiling, and I went to go tell her I want to work on this, but as soon as I saw her it all went away. I'm going to file for divorce. Update. About two weeks after my last post, early April, she moved out. And honestly, it feels like a curse has been lifted. That month of her being here and having to see her every day and being reminded of what she did ruined me. I was depressed with crazy mood swings. All of a sudden, I just feel flush with anger. But now that she's gone, I'm not dreading coming home anymore or waking up in the morning. I'm getting out, working on stuff around here, and have energy. It's been nice. She moved in with her mom, who was probably the only person who would take her while she finds an apartment or until I take her back, which won't be happening. My friends have been very helpful and supportive throughout this. Only a few are still really talking to her, even though they don't condone what she did. I ran into one of these friends, who is also a co-worker of hers, and she told me she's not doing well. Depressed, not doing well at her job, etc. As much as I don't wish her any specific misery, I can't say, I didn't take a little bit of joy in hearing that. I did ask her if she gave her a reason to why she did it. Pretty much got the same answer I did, although she added she felt like being selfish and wanted to be single again for a night, which she deeply regrets now. OP, I'm glad you divorced her and happy to hear you're doing well. Remember to always listen to your gut. Don't bottle up how you feel. You know she knew what she was doing. She shook off two friends. She was looking for something extra and went for it. She knew the friends would tell you if she didn't, so she confessed to beat them to the punch. She may feel bad now, but it was a conscious decision. I wish you the best of luck with your situation, OP, and hope you're able to heal from this. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.